Wrapping up my 2022 movie reviews, we've got two from the Liam Neeson Thriller Assembly line. Let's talk about Blacklight and Memory. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It, and welcome to my reviews for two Liam Neeson movies from 2022, uh, Blacklight and and Memory. Both uh, came out earlier in the year, kind of came and went at theaters, and uh, are just the latest in the the Neeson, um, you know, I called it the, the assembly line uh, in the intro, of just all of these movies that just keep on going, getting this, uh, this Taken type character uh, that he, you know, sort of brought to the table like 15 years ago. In the first take, and he keeps doing them at least two or three every single year. Um, and they're all kind of basic. Um, you know, every so often there's one that pops a little bit, and I'll give like a slight positive to it. But for the most part, um, you know, these are mostly just the same movie. Um, he's playing the same type of character, different name. But he's, you know, usually got some sort of history in, you know, either police work or the military or, you know, intelligence or something um, that allows him to be, you know, this almost superhuman, you know, kick-ass kind of dude who's in his 70s and, you know, busting people's heads that are, you know, a third <laughs> of his age, really. Um, so... Before we talk about these movies, I do want to welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. Uh, we've got tons of movie and TV reviews. Uh, try to put something new up just about every day for you. And uh, we are ramping up to my best and worst of 2022 now that the Oscars are over. So I'm going to be putting out a bunch of movies these next few weeks, uh, wrapping up 2022. And uh, I watched these in the same weekend. So I figured, you know what, they're, they're kind of the same movie. So we'll just lump them together. In fact, I'm going to sort of review them together and give my grades for both of them at the end. A lot of times with the multiple uh, review videos, I'll do one movie, then the second movie, then the third movie. But, I, you know, there's not uh, that much difference here, but little nuances uh, that we'll talk about. The plots are, are a bit different, um, but, uh, you know, not extreme. Um, all right, so let's talk about Blacklight first because that um, premiered in theaters first. Um, this was written and uh, co-written, I should say, and directed by Mark Williams, um, who I was unfamiliar with, but he did direct one other Liam Neeson movie, which was called Honest Thief, which I actually kind of enjoyed for a Neeson. I gave it, I think, a C plus, which you know, for a Neeson thriller, is actually pretty high praise. Um, and in this one, he is a an FBI fixer who wants to retire, spend more time with his daughter and his granddaughter. Uh, but he gets involved in this government conspiracy um, and, and, you know, tries to, to track down, you know, who's responsible and blah, blah, blah. All right. And then Memory, uh, which came out a few months later, directed by Martin Campbell, who actually has a pretty decent track record. He directed uh, one of the Zorro movies, or actually, I think, two Zorro movies. Um, and then uh, two Bond movies as well, including Casino Royale, which, you know, is, is a pretty good movie. So um, not sure what happened here. Maybe, maybe just sort of the, the laziness of the Neeson machine. But, uh, but in any event, uh, in this one, Neeson plays a hitman with early onset dementia, which, to be honest, again, you know, this dude's like 70 I don't know if that's what we would call early onset dementia, but all right, we'll we'll go along with it. Um, and he has a contract uh, to, you know, get this sex trafficker. Um, and the the stars uh, that co-star with him in this are the always horrible Guy Pierce and Monica Bellucci as well, who is not horrible, just kind of bland. In Blacklight, you've got uh, Aiden Quinn, Emily Raver Lampman. Um, all right, so. The uh, the Neeson movies are certainly for a, a, a specific crowd, um, you know, and, and that crowd has not been me for a while. Now, even aside from those original Taken movies, there were a few halfway decent ones in that early run. Walk Among the Tombstones was one of them that I can remember. Um, but lately, you know, they're just cranking them out much like... Um, like a Charles Bronson in the, in the 70s or Clint Eastwood started doing this type of role in the uh, 80s and 90s before he got into like the Grand Torino kind of era. Um, it just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not for me. I, I, can, I can like a dumb action movie every so often. 
but uh, I just wish Neeson would stretch out a little bit. Um, we know that he is a talented, dramatic actor. I mean, you know, Schindler's List, need we say more? But uh, he's also funny. He can do comedies, and in fact, he has been tapped to do a Naked Gun remake. Naked Gun, one of my all-time favorite comedies, um, with Leslie Nielsen, Liam Neeson, similar name, too. Um, but he's going to be sort of taking over that Frank Drebin role. And, and uh, okay, I, I'm interested to see it. Um, but these movies just, that they keep churning out, uh, Diamond Dozen, the action sequences in both of these movies, very frantic, um, the plot, tons of holes, uh, here and there, and the just engagement of the character. Um, I will admit, okay, maybe the, the dementia thing was an interesting wrinkle, he had to sort of remember certain things, but... Uh, the idea that he only remembered things exactly when he needed to, um, you know, like he would f sort of pass out in, in a car and then, uh, you know, somebody would come upon him that's trying to do him harm and, you know, all of a sudden he, you know, snaps into action and <laughs> starts, you know, kicking his butt. And it's like, oh, oh man, that's not how it works at all. Um, and then Blacklight, I will say, is... A little more interesting. I, I, I think the acting from the supporting cast is a little better. I admit, I don't like Guy Pierce, um, and he does nothing to, to change that in memory. But Blacklight, you know, look, I like Aiden Quinn maybe a little bit better, but I, I think the plot makes a little more sense in that one. Um, but there again, you've also got that classic family trope. You know, in the original Taken, it was all about his daughter being captured and family stuff. Um, here we have, you know, the, the daughter and the granddaughter and, oh, he just wants to live a normal life with them, but they keep pulling him back in to, uh, you know, to, to run this, uh, you know, figure out this conspiracy that's going on. Um, so look, neither of these movies are good, but if you have liked a lot of these Neeson movies of late, if you like things like The Commuter and the, what was the, the Ice, the Ice Road Trucker movie, was that called The Ice Storm or something like that? Um, uh, maybe you will find a little bit more in this uh, than I did. These are not the worst of the bunch, although um, memory probably comes close. Um, but yes, so in my you know, I don't know if we'll be hearing these titles again necessarily in my best of war best and worst of 2022, but it's it's possible that at least one of them may show up in my worst of the year. Um, you know, I'll have to look everything over. But I will leave uh Blacklight with a C minus and memory with a D. Not a lot of, <laughs> of compliments here, I, I know. Uh, but I I sort of expected that going into these movies. Um you know, they're they're sort of you could put them on on like a Saturday afternoon or something while you're you're cleaning and even though it's kind of visual with the action and stuff it's not anything neither one of them or anything that you need to really pay much attention to to uh, even figure out what's going on because half of the time the plot barely makes sense the other half oh okay Neeson's you know kicking that guy's butt all right cool <laughs> you know like we get it um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, stick around my channel for, uh, more 2022 wrap up videos. We're going to go actually month by month here, um, with, you know, a handful of movies from each month that I missed over the course of the year. And then, uh, soon enough, we will have the best and worst of the year. Now that the Oscars are over, definitely sort of, uh, crunch time on those movies. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Damn Reviews It.